Hi Canisius, it's Thursday, March 5th, and I'm Alexis Book. In today's news, we will be sitting down with USA presidential candidates Darby Ratliff and Rich Kubiak to discuss their campaign platforms. We will also give you an inside look on Little Theater's production of The Laramie Project with Little Theater's Vice President Gianna Romanelli. And as always, we will keep you updated on what happened in sports this past week and let you in on some upcoming events that's happening on campus. Stay tuned. This is Kanisha's Connection. Connection. I'm here with Darby Radcliffe, USA presidential candidate. Hi Darby, how's it going? I'm well, how are you Alexis? I'm good, thanks yeah. for having us. Of course, thank you for inviting me. All right, so I'm just going to ask you a couple questions about the election being sure. a race. All right, so elections are starting in just a couple days. What's the one thing you want Kanisha's undergrads to know about you before they cast their vote? I'd really like them to know that I'm very committed to translating what they need into a reality. I want to talk to students, I really want to know and get a feel like for what they see for this campus. Um, and, and make that into like what Canisius is and what it's all about. We're a community and the idea should be coming from the community. Definitely. All right, so from what I've heard, if you were to be elected president, you have a very specific timeline of events you'd like to have completed. Why I don't do. you tell me about, a bit about that? So the way I see it is I have, I want to start from day one. Like the moment I'm elected, I want to start and get going. Like that's really important to me to be able to show students that things can get done in a timely fashion and that things can be done. Um, so that involves a lot of work over the summer, which I'm more than happy to do. Um, I, if I'm one of those types of people who, if I'm not doing something, I feel very like I should be doing mm -hmm. something. And so this is a great opportunity for me to channel that energy into working for the student body. And as president, like that's something that like that candidate should be able to do. So I want to use the summer to like start working, see like lay the foundations, build the connections with administration that they already have with USA, and get them more maybe more used to working with me. I just want to do want to do a lot of research into what Chartwells could do. I want to do if their contract is renewed. I want to do a lot of research into like a more even an even an even more specific timeline. Right now I have it month by month. Mm -hmm. Even if I could even get it down to like week by week, that would be great. Um, but more importantly, I want to be able to see build, like start working on surveys and good ways to reach out to the student to the student body. Like whether that's surveys, if that's a, like a plan of attack for like the senators when they're back in office or back elected. Um, naturally, we're going to have to plan the Senate retreat and set more specific goals for the year. But I, and then as the school year moves on, I want to do at least two networking events a month for students who aren't necessarily involved in clubs. And even if they are, they're welcome to come. Um, I want to do make sure that we're prepared for a sexual assault awareness campaign. And whether we'll be doing that both in the fall and the spring like remains to be seen. But I certainly want to have at least like one large sexual assault awareness campaign. Uh, the same thing goes for mental health awareness. And then as I'm working more with Chartwells on getting the meal plans reconfigured and working to lay the foundation for a student union. I see those things being finalized at the end, if not, not before, but at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what else are you involved in on campus currently and how do you think that's gonna give you an edge in the race? Well, I'm involved in, in quite a bit on campus. <laughs> um, I've made, I, I really love being involved. Um, it's something that I'm definitely willing to narrow down to, like, to the presidency and maybe to one other thing, just so I'm still connected with the campus. Um, but right now I'm a spiritual intern in campus ministry. I work for admissions as both a tour guide and, and in the call center as a telecounselor. Um, I'm involved in three different honor societies on campus, including the Di Gamma Honor Society, Alpha Sigma Nu, and Sigma Tau Delta, which is the English honors. Um, and I do a variety of other things here and there besides being a senator, of course. All right, so out of all the other candidates running, who do you think is gonna give you the most competition? You know, I really hate to like pick at one person because I trust both Rich and Russ to have their own strategy and own way of doing things. And I really respect that. I think everybody has to have like their own signature way of doing something that makes them a unique candidate and a unique person for that matter. Um, I worked with Rich a lot in the, my past like couple years at Canisius. We were on mock trial together. We were in um, Phi Alpha Delta, which is the pre-law society. Um, and I know Rich to be somebody who is very thorough, very like poignant and peaked in like what he wants to do. 
Uh, but at the same time, Russ has done an amazing job with Community Day. Like, I would not doubt him for a second. Mm -hmm. All right, so one more question before we're going to let you go. Sure. If you could be any kitchen appliance, what kitchen appliance would you be? Oh, that's a fun question. I love a good fun question. <laughs> um, let's see, what would I be? Um, are, you know, I'm going to go with the blender. Maybe it's just because I like smoothies and I'm still running high off of RHA and PC's grilled cheese and smoothie night. <laughs> uh, totally a possibility. But I really want to blend student ideas together and make, that in, make them into something that's healthy and good for the campus. So that's what I'm going with. So creative. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thanks for being with us, Tarby. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Lexi, for having me. All right. So we're going to cut to a commercial. Stay tuned. And we'll be back with uh, Rich Kubiak. Welcome back to Canisius Connections. I'm here with USA presidential candidate, Rich Kubiak. Hi, Rich, how's it going? Hi, how are you, Alexis? I'm not too bad, how are you doing? Uh, pretty good, I'm excited to be on the show and uh, answer some of your questions. All right, awesome, well then let's get started. Mm -hmm. So Rich, obviously normally presidential candidates use flyers, social mm -hmm. media, and posters to advertise their campaign. This year you took it a little bit further than that. Why don't you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, this year I developed the Kubi app along with my roommate, Sean Wagner, who's um, in computer science. The reason I did that was because I really wanted to show people and give them an example throughout the campaign that I could take it to the next level if I was elected president of student government. Um, the app centralizes all my information from Facebook, Twitter, um, just posts that I have. I have articles on the app in one spot, as well as provides the contact information for everybody. So I thought it was a unique and forward-looking way to, to bring the campaign materials and show them it's an actual event and, and something that I could do. So are you at all concerned that relying so heavily on the QB app, a platform that students aren't used to working with, is going to harm your campaign at all? Um, no, not really, because I take the extra steps, because what I really think is important is meeting people face to face. Mm -hmm. So that's what I take the time to do. The Kubi app shows people that I could do things that you might not expect. It gives them a different look at what can be done on this campus if we just set our mind to it. But really, it's about the face-to-face -face interaction. Coming here is big. Going to the dorms is big. Um, cafeteria, anywhere people are, going, talk to them, answering questions so that they know who the best candidate is. Mm -hmm. All right, so unlike the other two candidates, you have actual experience on USA's eBoard mm -hmm. as current VP of Business and Finance. How do you think that's going to benefit you? If elected, it would be <laughs> tremendous because I've already experienced what it's like to sit on the executive board for student government, which I've discovered after being on other leader in other leadership roles on campus with Phi Alpha Delta and Mock Trial and Can Do Society, that it's a different beast. You have a lot of time that you have to dedicate. In fact, this year I've um, reduced my involvement in other clubs so that I could focus on student government and make a large impact there with dealing with the student organizations and club leaders who need my attention. Um, Whenever they need my attention, I can be there to give it to them. So I, I would be really excited to use that experience and make changes to enhance the student government that exists now. Okay, so who do you find is your biggest competition in the race? Well, both of them obviously are very qualified candidates. Mm -hmm. um, both competition itself is kind of a, it makes me nervous. <laughs> obviously, I, I thrive in competition. I love competition, but I'd probably say um, Darby Ratliff. Just because she has a wide reach with people on campus, she has a lot of um, people that she's involved with in student organizations. So she knows a lot of people already, um, and sometimes it's difficult having people understand beyond a personal level why yeah. somebody would be a more qualified candidate. So I just want to make sure that I can get out and reach those people. So it'd probably be Darby. Okay. All right, so elections are coming up really soon. What's the one thing you want the undergrads to know about you before they cast their vote? Do you want it to be personal or professional? Whatever you choose. Okay. Um, the one thing that I really want people to know is that I'm extremely passionate about student government. Since I've come to Canisius, it's been the one thing that I've been in every single year. I give 150%, and I know I'm the numbers guy, 100 is the max that you can give, but I give everything <laughs> I can and more to make sure that the communication between me and any student that I have to deal with um, is completely there so there's no confusion or frustration. And with Vice President for Business and Finance, I think I've truly shown that. 
And as president of the Undergraduate Student Association, I would definitely take the focus from student organization leaders and apply it to the entire campus so that we could get real things done on campus. For instance, a new student business, which I discussed, also bringing new innovative things in the way of sustainability and other things like that onto campus. So it's, it's my passion and my dedication and my willingness to respond to emails at 4 a.m., 4 p.m., or midnight. Uh, so that they should consider that. Okay, all right, we've got time for one last question. If you could be any kitchen appliance, what kitchen appliance would you be and why? Um, any kitchen appliance? Any. I would probably be, hmm, I'd probably be a pot. Just so I could cook, uh, you, know, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> that, it seems to be the most useful because you can cook anything. In it. But I didn't have a creative answer, <laughs> but that's what I went with. <laughs> no, it's practical. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for coming on the show with us, Rich. Yep. It was nice talking to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. No problem. You guys stay tuned in. We're going to cut to a quick commercial ba break, and we'll be right back with Kanisha's Connections. Day one, Greeny. Rise and shine. What is this place? Can you tell me your name? I, uh, I can't remember anything. Who put us here? We don't know. What's out there? The maze. Every morning when those doors open, the runners look for a way out. No one has ever survived a night in the maze. What happens to them? We don't belong here. I think it's time we find out what we're really up against. Everything started changing the moment you showed up. It's a girl. Thomas. Why are we different? What if we were sent here for a reason? You're not like the others. You're curious. But if you want to stay here, I need to know that you're going to follow the rules. Laramie is a beautiful town, it's secluded. Now, after Matthew, we're a town defined by a crime. And you're gonna use our words? I've never done anything like this before. How do you get people to talk to you? What do you ask? I seem what appeared to be a young man. He was bound to the bottom of the pole. 
told, the perpetrators themselves were kids, local kids. That certainly offends us. They wanted to teach him a lesson not to come on to straight people. We don't grow children like that here? Well, it's pretty clear we do grow children like that here. I should have known. These guys should not have been talking to that guy. Hate crime's a hate crime. You murder somebody, you hate them. I don't know. This is America. Love the person for who they are, but condemn them for what they do. Some people are gonna be sent to hell! And I think you know who you are. Someone needs to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and show the difference. What's come out of it? Good is coming out of evil. People have said enough is enough. This whole thing ropes around hope. H-O-P-E. This is no longer about Laramie. This is about the whole country. Hi, I'm Zakia Gale, and I'm here with um, Julia Gianna, the vice president of the Little Theater. Hi, Gianna. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Good. So, can you tell me about um, uh, the play, The Laramie Project? So, The Laramie Project is a play that surrounds the incident that happened in Laramie, Wyoming, in 1998. Matthew Shepard was uh, tied to a fence and beaten until death by two other men. And what Moises Coffin and the Tectonic Theater Project did was go out to Laramie, Wyoming following the incident, and they interviewed everybody in Laramie, got their opinions on it, and thus edited those interviews and created the Laramie Project, which has been performed um, since 1999. So it's roughly, uh, it's a good 15, 17 years old. Oh, wow. Okay, so the title is the Laramie Project. Is it an actual project? I don't really know. You could consider it a project uh, because the play overall serves um, a message of tolerance and um, an awareness of hate crimes and other sort of um, a, you know like a lack of legislation of hate crimes in some states at the time period and of course the discrimination towards people in the LGBT community at the time. Wow that sounds really interesting. So um, I'm hearing a lot of people are really anticipating about the play so can you tell me about like a little bit about your role and what you've been doing? So um, as the vice president part of Little Theater, what I've been doing is I've been working directly with uh, Western New York Pride Center and the um, GLIS, which is Gay and Lesbian Youth Services of Buffalo, to sort of get them involved and really branch out to the community. We've reached out to Unity, uh, the LGCA, GSA, excuse me, GSA <laughs> Society on campus, and we've just been using this play to branch out into the community especially regarding this topic that's been so progressive in these past few years. Yeah, is this the first LGBT play here at Canisius? Yeah, it is. In the many years that Canisius has been here, this is one of the first LGBT-centered plays we've ever done. And what made you guys decide that now is the time that you guys should have this kind of play? Was there like a, a reason behind it or were people just really ex like loving this kind of play and just wanted to do it? Or? So we proposed it to our director, Eileen Dugan, who is a professor um, here at Canisius too. We gave her the idea. She loved it and pretty much just went for there from there. It was a unanimous vote but with all the people on the LTE board. Okay, so I know you probably know a lot about this play. Is there like a favorite character chair that you have? Oh my goodness. Um, I play three different characters. Oh, there, wow. there are over 60 characters in the play overall, all of which are, you know, word for word verbatim people from Laramie, Wyoming. But my favorite is um, Zubaida Ula. She is an Islamic feminist living in Wyoming, which is kind of weird you don't really make that association. But one of the lines she has during one of the candlelight vigil scenes is, you know, we need to own this crime. You can say it happened, it, it didn't happen in Laramie. Let's show Laramie that we're not this kind of town. And she proceeds to say, but it is this kind of town. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't this kind of town, this wouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. We need to own this crime. And I, I take that very much to heart. I believe that's a really good philosophy. I don't think people own things as much as they do normally. Yeah, so not only are you playing three parts, you're also the vice president of the mm -hmm. whole the little theater. Do you find that you have a lot on your plate at the moment? At the moment, between Western New York Pride and the play itself, um, yes, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of people to talk to, a lot of you know papers and flyers and all that, but it's been a wonderful experience. Yeah, it sounds like it. So what are the dates of this play? 
So the play is tonight, Thursday the 5th at 8 p.m., tomorrow, Friday, also at 8 p.m., and then it's a Saturday matinee at 2 p.m. with a talk back afterwards. Is it free for students? Yes, it's free for everybody. Everybody's encouraged to come. <laughs> Wow, this has been so great. So I definitely think that everyone should check out the, the Laramie Project. Yep. The name is so hard for me to say sometimes. <laughs> and I definitely think that it's something to watch here for the community. community. Thank you so much for having Thank us. Thank you. back everyone to Kanisha's Connections. I'm Brenda Rudd and I'm here with Kia and we're going to recap what's been happening with sports lately. Ready to get started Kia? You bet. Last weekend softball played a series of games in Myrtle Beach SC against teams like Cornell who they faced team two times. Army and Brown softball would go off to a great start as they beat Cornell in their first matchup with a score of 12-3 in five innings. They couldn't capitalize on a great start as they would, as they would Army and wound up losing 2-4 in extra innings. Softball would continue to um, this trend as they would defeat Brown the day after, winning 2-4, but against the loss in Cornell in their second matchup, 6-7 and 8 innings. Coming off that roller coaster of wins and losses, softball will compete this weekend at the USF Clearwater Tournament that will see the tournament playing through two days of doubleheaders in one game on Sunday. Brandon, what's going on with baseball? Well, Kia, the baseball team was also playing some games this, this weekend over at South Carolina, but in the city of Lexington. Baseball also had a, gr a, game, a great start to their weekend as th they beat the game, beat games against UNC Asheville with a score to 10-3, but will only get that win as they had back-to-back -back losses following that game. The first loss came on Saturday against George Mason as the Griffs were crushed with a score of 13-3. Next, later on that day, the second loss was against Delaware as the defense was better, but the offense wasn't there as they lost by a score of 5-1. The baseball Grizz will look for a better result this weekend as they face a four-game series against James Madison. And speaking on better results, Kia, how is hockey going? For hockey, the team played their two regular games away against Air Force. Last Friday, the Griff, last Friday, the Griffs put up a strong performance as they beat Air Force with a score of 4-1. Cody Freeman provided a spark as he scored two goals for the team, while his teammate Mitch McCrank chipped in with a goal and assist. Sadly, the team couldn't stay consistent as it was a role rehearsal as Air Force won the next game with the same score 4-1. Tyler Wiseman would be the only one who scored for the team in the final contest. 
Coming up for hockey is the Atlantic Tournament, which starts Monday, which starts on March 13th, and their opponent is to be determined. It will be the best of three series to start the tournament off. Sounds like a great thing to look forward to. Now moving off the ice and onto the field with men's and women's lacrosse. Last Saturday, the men's lacrosse faced Michigan and Ann Arbor and put up a valiant effort, but was not enough as the Grizz would be beaten by a score of 5-13. to The Grizz had five players who had goals, so the scoring was a group effort. For the women's side, they had to go to New Haven, Connecticut to face Yale on Sunday. The team had more scoring than the men's side, but ultimately lost the game 8-12. to The main goal-getter for the team was attacker Taylor Giglio, who had five goals. Now, coming up for both teams are one game each on Tuesday. Men's lacrosse will face Hobart in Geneva, New York, and women's lacrosse will face St. Bonaventure in New Orleans, uh, New, Orleans New York. Kia? Moving on to the hard work. Men's basketball is in action Friday, February 27th for their final regular season game against Fairfield. After coming off a loss against rival Niagara, the Griffs were back into winning from as they won the game 72-65. The big scorers of the game were the two big men as Josiah Heath had 18 points and Kevin, Kevin Bleeker had 15 points. Next up for the team is the MAC Championship so as they will once again face Monmouth and Albany for their opening match. Speaking of the MAC Championships, what's happening in women's basketball, Brandon? Well, earlier today the women's basketball team faced Monmouth in the opening rounds of the MAC Championships and sadly ended their season as they lost to them by a score of 68-56. to 56. It was a hard-fought game, but the Grizz couldn't find the spark to finish the game on top. As always, Kayla Huhuli led the, led the scoring with 18 points and 2 assists, and followed by Crystal Porter, who had 12 points, 3 steals, and an assist. On the behalf of Griffin TV and Kanisha's Connections, we would like to congratulate the Lagris on a good season. Well, that's all we have for you today in sports. Stay tuned, because when we come back, Alexis will keep you informed about what's happening on campus. Welcome back to Kanisha's Connection. Now let's take a look at some upcoming events on campus. Did you notice the movie trailers during our commercial breaks? Griff Flix is running numerous amount of movies such as The Maze Runner, The Fault in Our Stars, and many more every Thursday at 9 p.m. in the Palisano Pavilion. Don't miss out on the Zero Shades of Grey sex talk tonight in Montante at 7 p.m. Zero Shades of Grey will give you the tools you need to communicate about sex, consent, and mix signals properly. If you've ever felt confused about dating, intentions, boundaries, or expectations, this is the lecture for you. In order to support today's message of there being no gray area when it comes to consent, SPB asks you to please wear black and white to the event. If you have ever been a victim of sexual assault or domestic abuse, you can call Erie County's Advocate Program at 716-834-3131 to have access to their free and confidential services. You are not alone. Manage your stress this semester and restore balance to your daily life by attending the weekly meditations on Wednesday nights at 5 p.m. in Bosch 105. Walk-ins and any level experience are welcome. For more information, you can email Mike Kamaraffa at C-A-M-M-R-A-A-M at Kanisha's.edu. 
That's all we have for you today. Make sure to check out Griff TV on Facebook and YouTube. We are a new show on Channel 19 every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. From all of us here at Canisius Connection, stay classy, Buffalo.